I really appreciate it. It's always good to be with the Brain Trust and uh, test out a number of new things for me as well. Um, and you're going to see in this presentation some new things. Um, and I've kind of moved on to the, the digital, what I call pull of process side of this. So I believe that process is one of the secret weapons or secret sauces that's going to be in digital. And I'm coming from that perspective. So I'll tell you what my bias is right off the top. Now, hopefully, that's consistent with what you want. Um, and so what we're seeing in organizations is that they have a couple of things they can do with digital disruption. One is they can ignore it, either by sticking their head in the ground or in the clouds, or they can die a slow, painful death. If you do nothing, that's what's going to happen to you. And this is a very exciting time. I've lived through, as you can tell by my age and lack of hair, I've lived through a number of different things, database, online, real time, all kinds of different things. This is the most, and BPM, of course, this is probably the most exciting. That's why I'm not retiring, even though I should be, and my wife constantly reminds me I should be. So let's talk about what those business demands that are stretching us and the technical demands. There are new emerging technologies every day. So digital transformation will be, uh, have to be faced. And the first thing we're going to talk about is why should organizations pay attention? You know, is this just more hype from uh, a Gartner, ex-Gartner analyst who's turned tail and gone somewhere else? Um, what are the business and technical forces that are pulling? And what's the journey likely to look like? And one of the things that I believe in architecturally is a digital business platform. Each organization will be faced with building one. Um, it may be best of breed, most likely will be. So here's what organizations are doing. We've talked about customer loyalty. We've had a number of demos on it. We've said we're going to mine. Um, you know, speeding up organizations to, the, you know, linking that speed to the change that we see in IoT. IoT is happening in, what, nanoseconds? So there are a lot of things that can happen. And we're going to be linking the front-end white-collar systems to the IoT more than you think. There are going to be upstarts in the industry. There are going to be significant differentiation. And... Organizations are fighting to be a significant digital organization. Not that they, you know, they want digital so they can say it at their, at their cocktail party. They have to do that to survive. So this is from a study that was done um, out of MIT and done with uh, Capgemini. So this basically talks about the four types of engagement that you can have. One is if you have great digital ca capability and great leadership, you are a digital master. I don't see too many digital masters out in the real world today. Probably the closest that I've seen from a customer perspective might be Amazon. I think they get it. I think they do it quite well. As a customer, I'm delighted with them. Um, though I have to say the more I pay them, the more delighted I am in them and vice versa. But most people are in this you know, low digital capability uh, and maybe some leadership. So most people today are either a beginner or a conservative. Um, there are some people, and I worked for a company like this, um, American Express, which was a fashionista. They used to throw things against the wall and see what stuck. Whack, whack. Oh, let's do some more of that. Now, they don't have as much money as they used to when I worked there. I don't know if it was my salary or what, but they are not doing quite as much of that. So um, it's easy to fall into being too conservative or a fashionista from the beginning standpoint. So you say, so what? Why should I care? Here's why you should care. They did a significant amount of research to say, What's going to happen if you stay in a category? Well, if you stay in a digital master, 
and you're going to have to fight to stay as a digital master. It's not going to, I'm there, I'm there forever. You've got to keep working and reinventing yourself. You see revenue, profitability, market valuation is up. If you stay where you are, look at this. Profitability is going to go down. Um, if you're a fashionista, you're going to get some revenue, but you're not going to be effective. If you're a conservative, you're going to be very effective, but you're not going to get a lot of revenue increase. So if you're, a, if you're not a stock company, if you're not evaluated in the stock market, maybe that's not so bad. Maybe it's okay to be private and very well managed and comfortable, and you go to your golf club and swing your clubs every once in a while, and it's kind of nice and it's very well managed. I don't think organizations can afford to be that way. And it, and it does differ by industry. Everybody says, well, my industry is a little different. So if you take a look at those that are in a short fuse big bang in terms of global disruption by digital, there are a fair amount of industries that fall into that particular quadrant. Now, like we said earlier, everybody likes quadrants, right? Because that's what analysts do for a living. I particularly like them. Um, this one's rather skewed, isn't it? There's a lot of short, short fuse, big bang. There's also long fuse, big bang. And then there are people that you really don't necessarily want to do this. So if you're on this top two thirds of the chart, you want to go for digital. Now, the reality is only 27% of organizations that Gartner had done a study on looking at hundreds of CIOs actually have a digital plan, even if it's infant. That's not very high. So what are these forces? Now, I'm going to use as an example um, before I joined Aragon, which is my new uh, research company, Aragon Research, um, with, it's a very small one, boutique. They were the only people I found that were going to fund me doing what I wanted. It's nice to do what you want, isn't it? And I had a boss that agreed with me, or a potential boss. I looked at a startup company. Um, I wanted to work in a startup company. I wanted to become rich like the really rich people have my own fast car. So what I did is I came up with a way of evaluating this startup because I didn't know these people. Sounded like they had a good idea. What they were was authorization using biometrics. So I decided to use a business framework um, from Osterwalder and put in what that business model would be. This helped me evaluate and talking with the, uh, the, the partners, potential partners, whether they had a good business model. Turns out they had a great business model, but they lied about how much software they had, so I said bye. It was just an idea. But what's happening, this model becomes legacy because of the demand for innovation, the speed that's required to stay germane, the demands for agility and business change, what your constituents, customers, shareholders, employees, partners, all of these things, and you can read it like I can, I'm not gonna read this for you, are stretching your business. I'll guarantee you, uh, everybody in this room can see the results of this in their organization. At least four or five of these are tugging at your CEO's coattails. And if it's a she, tugging on maybe her purse, I don't know. But this is a big deal. So this is one major force stretching organizations. Also, I looked at the technical architecture that they said they had, which when I checked the code, they didn't have it. All they had was a fake demo. So it's easy to produce fake demos, isn't it? So um, they used a comparative, they had a server, they had websites, they dealt with mul multiple devices, they had you know, a foolproof um, three-point uh, approach to the software, 
And I mean, it was a great idea. They had patents, they had lawyers, they even had accountants, but they didn't have any product. <laughs> so I left them. But also, that would become a legacy overall because there would be competitors. So, and there would be new kinds of software. We've got the typical things that you've seen now is a secure social mobile. We had a good example of that in the last session. Customer journey mapping, signal and pattern recognitions. We've heard people say, I'm not only looking for events, I'm looking for associated events that are telling me I have a business pattern. That business pattern may mean that I compare that pattern, that emerging pattern, to some strategy planning that I've done. Maybe I've used simulation. Um, for instance, one hospital that I'm aware of did simulations for evacuations after some tornadoes wiped out almost all of the institutions in uh, Wichita. So all the hospitals got together and said, hey, we need to come together. And we want to see when we've got these emerging conditions. So these signals and patterns might do that. We have fast and big data. They're both good. Um, and, and, and big data is one thing, but super fast data is another. And if we're dealing with nanoseconds, we're going to have that. Web, web scale cloud integration, polyanalytics, Internet of Things, which, uh, by the way, I don't like that name either, but it's out there. So we've got to live with it, unfortunately. 3D printing, augmented reality, blockchain, Bitcoin. Um, I don't understand it as deeply as others, but what I understand it is it's pretty foolproof in terms of auditing. There's not enough computing power to unravel it, even if you could, because things are nested and hashed. Uh, cognitive computing, robots we heard about today. I, I believe that we're headed the way that Nathan said um, some of it will be robots, some of it will be cognitive bots, some of it will be um, machines and sensors all, you know, working to, to help us. We saw in their last example where that was helpful. We're going to see, um, and I've written a chapter for a book that's coming out this summer on how knowledge workers are going to be su become superheroes because of cognitive insists. You can be a generalist and have bots help you for the specialty. Why do we specialize? Almost all of the industry specializes. Why? Because we want excellence, right? And if you have people specializing in the same thing over and over and over again, they get good. Well, why can't somebody learn that? They can. And they can put it inside of a cognitive and assist. Or you could, um, in some cases, collaborate. But most people, when you have to collaborate with other people, what do you get? Delays. How many of you are about as impatient as me and can't wait to get the answer? Right? I'm not going to sit there and wait. Give me a cog that knows. I don't care whether it's deep mind. I don't care where it's Watson. Just cog me, baby. So the idea of uh, context-rich uh, rule and constraint management, we said, well, is everything going to be willy-nilly? If we can't write the rules, no, you put constraints on it. So you can wander within certain constraints and governance. So these are some of the technologies that can impact the logical architecture. I think we've all kind of, you've heard this theme over and over again. These are the four major areas that digital um, basically includes. Customer delight, business operations, new products and services, and potentially business model transformation. If all those stresses that I put on the slides earlier is true, you're going to get that. Now, is this sequential? Maybe not. Maybe you do the business transformation. Maybe you need a new model because yours is so broken. I don't think you know, a lot of banking models are broken, or maybe they are. So here's some real examples where, and by the way, I said I'm a process bigot and a rule bigot. That's where I come from. Here's an example of process. This is a retail therapy. They determine where the customer is. If they, if they are a customer, they know their cell phone. They know they walked in the store. They offer them different uh, opportunities the minute they walk in the store. Let's say they, they catch somebody uh, you know, looking in the men's department, and all of a sudden it links back to the inventory system and says, hey, we got a ton of shoes. This 
person's buying something for Father's Day, why don't we offer them a smoking deal and a pair of shoes to go along with the tiles, ties that you know, this person's looking for, with. At, say it's a, a daughter or a son. So um, this will automatically offer a, a great offering. And also, based on what you buy, if you don't have a cell phone and you're not a great customer and you don't have a credit card, it'll put something on the receipt. So maybe after you look at it, you say, oh, geez, I could have got a pair of shoes too. Here's one for, so that's at the customer interaction side. I, you know, you're hearing a lot of stories just like that, right? You're, you're getting offers when you go in the store if you're signed up. Here's one for uh, operations improvement. This is an example where they do a simulation um, for this surgery center at the beginning of the day, and they tag all the patients, all the loved ones, all the equipment, everything, and if anything goes wrong, um, there's a monitor that shows, they notify everybody, and um, they're able to re-simulate, incrementally simulate, to say this is how uh, an efficient operation ought to go. Um, after living this with this particular one, and this has been in production for a long time, they found out that they needed to buy more sterilizers because um, the accountant was keeping everybody from buying things. Do accountants keep people from buying things? Yes, that's their life, right? Just like accounts payable is to stall. So we can improve our operations. We can come up with new products and services. Here's an example of uh, putting wristbands on um, citizens that uh, happen to have dementia and they start approaching the, the borders. I had a father-in-law that had dementia and he used to do what is known as bolting. He decided in his mind that he wanted a, something new at the hardware store even though he really didn't have anything, but he, in his mind he had to fix something. You know, they'd find him in the side of the road tipped over with his walker, you know, in the gutter like this, right? If there was a system like this that would let you know when you're approaching a secure, the security border, that wouldn't have happened to him. He could have been run over. So here's a Internet of Things combined with, you know, a normal uh, kind of a process. Again, these are process and rule-driven solutions. Here's another one where it's a new business model. Um, this happens to be my home in Arizona. Um, it's not for sale. I just had to come up with a picture quick. Um, so the new way of buying a house, you photograph a house that knows where you are. Um, you create a profile. Um, the bank or whoever you're doing, by the way, this works in Ireland. There are three banks that do this. They aggregate your financials, they generate a, 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 model, um, a budget, they uh, search for more homes, they create an app and circulate it uh, to the lenders, they uh, post-closing, they offer, offer more services from that bank, and then they you know, basically auto open new accounts. Different kind of business model for a bank. Now, when I was looking for that house, I would have loved that, wouldn't you? So, everybody, has issues with their legacy, right? Everybody has issues um, that they have to live with. Uh, digital is better when it focuses in on the differentiating and mission control. Don't waste your time on standard stuff. I mean, we're gonna sit there and fight all day about the standard things. Unless somebody comes up with a more innov innovative way of making something standard differentiating again. Now, I believe that there'll be more intelligence added to software, more intelligence added to each of our, uh, the people we deal with. There'll be more intelligence uh, added to um, all kinds of devices. So you're gonna have goal-directed processes where all of the resources will swarm automatically to bid on the work. That's the world I think we're headed towards. That's another one of my biases. It's gonna take a while before we get there, but there are examples of that today. We see that in um, uh, Detroit Edison, for instance. Um, they have, uh, when they see a storm approaching, um, they will automatically let a bunch of independent people know they can restring electric lines and they'll assemble those agents for when the storm occurs and when it occurs and the damage occurs, 
People bid on that work. Independents bid on that kind of work. So this is where we're headed. And I, I, I think, and, and let's say we're not even going to get there soon. I think we're going to get there sooner than later. We're going to have to come up with combinations of structured collaboration and IoT, agent bidding collaboration, working together dynamically. This is the kind of process you're going to see a little bit of each piece. So we can stop fighting about case and, B and structured BPM, please. Uh, if you want to fight about swarming, that's good, you know, because then it makes, you know, there's maybe some interest. So the digital world will require creating an incremental transformation plan, little by little. And this transformation plan, over time, will improve, 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 and revisit an initial target based on what's happening in the business. Some of those patterns that we were talking about, business patterns, uh, will require you to do that. Now, here's a, a, a great case study um, from one of my favorite vendors. They started off with these farms where they, they took pills and dialed them in for the kind of crop that was in the field. They scattered these pills, and the pills would call out to the farmers and say, I need water, I need fertilizer. I'm a tomato plant, I need it now. Okay? So the second thing they did is they decided, well, why bother the farmer? Well, you just have the robotic arms come out and give liquid fertilizer and water. And then the third was to link. So let's say the pills are screaming, I want water. And turns out there was a storm in, in the, the um, in the mountains about four miles away, and the runoff was going to hit you two days from now. So the pills are screaming, I want water. But if you give them water and this runoff comes, what happens? You're in trouble, right? You're going to drown the plants. They also linked it to their uh, weather models, their satellite weather models. This happened to be Australia. And they've increased the output, uh, a food output, by 40%. So they did it in incremental pieces. So this is just an example. But these are all live in production today. I, could, I, I had a hard time choosing which case studies I wanted, because I could have picked from probably two dozen in each category. These things are out here. This is not pretend. It's working. So what will a journey look like, and what provisions should you carry? So this is my cut at what you should be looking at. You might disagree with me. Well, what does a digital target look like? Well, you need a target business architecture. We talked about having modeling tools for business architecture. I looked for them. I couldn't find one. I had to do one by hand. I think that would help. And it would have uh, goals, visualizations, and phases for the architecture. So you have to build one part of the business or revert or rehab part of a business model. You need cost and benefits. You need a, a capital expenditure, a budget, income sources, a rough organization, some sponsors, some people, some skills. You're contributing technologies off that list. I gave you a dozen, right? There's, I probably didn't get them all. And tomorrow there'll be another one. So we'll be constantly updating this plan. We'll have to have proof of concepts. We said you have to experiment. We've got vendors begging us to use their sandboxes to experiment and innovate, whether they're fast development, whether they're simulation, whether they're modeling. All of them are there inviting us to do POCs. And we have to figure out what the long-term time frames are. We need to come up with verification and measurement, and we need to uh, experiment and do post audits. What went well, what didn't go well, right? Do it, try it, fix it. Make dust or eat it. That's the world we're living in today. Can BPM play in that world? Yes. Some of these examples that I gave you were done very quickly, others not. So, what are the inputs to building this digital plan? 
There's vision stated and unstated by management. That's the hardest part to gather because then you have to go and interview executives. I've done this before and you wonder if you're going to end up with your head in, in, under your arm when you walk out of the, the room, right? It's always hard to talk to them sometimes, especially if they're high up. Um, operation plans. If you, you're afraid to talk to the executives or your executives aren't open and they're not visionaries, look at the operational plans. Look for common threads. Get customer inputs, whether it's focus groups, desires, tests, surveys. Get competitive industry trends. There are benchmarks out there. There are industry focus groups out there. Start um, looking for uh, existing constraints that are in your organizations. How many of you have sad stories in management limits in your organization, right? Uh, you know, Frank tried this last time. He blew up, right? See, see him? He's this melted pot of uh, wax over here, right? So you have to look for the sad stories. You have to look for the political booby traps. You know, sometimes, have you ever seen a manager that's completely incompetent but has a lot of power in middle management? Have you ever seen that? Every day. <laughs> So you're going to have to work around those things. Um, think about which digital technologies are going to be resisted. And think about your legacy. You have to salvage and surround and leverage and tweak and revisit by putting rules into old stuff where there's a hot spot. You have to do that. It's all part of this. It's not all Greenfield. I wish it was. Sorry. It's not. You have to come up with some new principles. And by the way, I didn't have any principles. And my wife claims I don't have any. No. Um, so I made some up here and say, here are some business principles that you might want to consider. Here are some technical principles you might want to consider. So mine is attract and spoil customers. I mean, that's my number one that I came up with. Starting and finishing. Uh, with an outside in eliminating internal silos. How many of you have ever had to do a transaction where they transfer you from one department to another because they didn't want to deal with it because they were being measured on time and your question was too complicated, right? Or your set of events they couldn't finish with the standard times that management gave them. Or they just wanted to punt. All of a sudden, you're talking to somebody and you get dead noise and you have to go through the queue again. Wait five minutes and listen to my crappy music, right? This happens all the time. Build inclusion and organize for change. Create operational excellence. Encourage and reward innovation. How many of your companies reward you for taking risk? Anybody? Yep. You get it, right? Happens to you. But you're an analyst. That's your job, right? Take risks. Take bullets. I worked for a company that was the most stodgy, conservative company. And they realized if they didn't change, they were going to be in trouble. Management came up with a pot of gold that said, people that are willing to take risks, you get a piece of this pot of gold. And we'll evaluate it you several times throughout the year and give out little pieces of gold to those that do it. So there, there are things, technical principles. Collaborate with business. We've been talking about that all day. Experimentation is essential. We've been talking about that all day. Composition instead of creation. If it's already there, use it. If there's a cog in the cloud, use it. We saw in our last uh, demo where some of the cognitive pieces were already there. We went out and got them. Agile development is first prize. Scalability and security has to be built in. These are some principles that I think would be a jump start for people. You have to have new competencies. You have to have constituency engagement. How do you keep everybody involved? How do you stay hyper aware? Not just looking for patterns you like. Look for patterns you don't like. Complex problem solving. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm afraid of complexity, and it's all complex. And guess what? Life is complex. I mean, I keep trying to run away from it, but it is complex. 
Now, someday maybe all these robots and cogs will make my life so easy I don't have to think anymore and I don't have to struggle anymore. I don't know. Creative digital design, anticipatory decision making. Decision, when we're going to be talking about decision making a great deal tomorrow, as I understand it. Innovative productivity, operations agility. These are the things that we have to work on. And th this is the same thing I'm going to be telling CIOs in workshops, because Aragon Research is going to be doing workshops for uh, companies. You need some new skills to bolster those, those uh, competencies. Your business expertise, technology expertise, entry level expertise. I don't know if I had these right. I did these thinking they were right. You'll tell me if they're wrong, I know you will. There may be some missing. But you have to have a, a list to start with to know what you want to work on. Here are the digital technologies, and, and this, this is the same list I showed you before, except this one tells you where the risk is. If it's green, go for it. If it's yellow, be careful. If it's red, you may be a pioneer. What happens to pioneers? They get arrows in their back. There you go. So I think this one's moving up into yellow. You know, in my book, I'm publishing it that it's red yet. But it, it could be moving to yellow. Um, I haven't seen enough examples. And I, always, I was burnt during the AI period myself. I worked on a number of AI systems in the 80s. And um, that stuff was very difficult. I think Watson and DeepMind make it better. But I think, there, I think there are legal and ethical issues that have to get sorted out yet. So this is the typical refining a digital plan. You gather it, you interact, you create. And iteration is absolutely crucial to digital. You know, this, this happens to be a picture I, I took uh, who, you know, from Harvard Business Review. It's called the Innovator's Method. It's a great method. Also, what's missing is everybody will tell you why you need to do digital transformation. Everybody will tell you what some of the technologies are, you can find case studies, but there's no real good maturity model that's not so technically oriented, it's not useful. Um, one of the reasons I joined Aragon is they're going to pay me to fill this in. So the next time you see this, it'll be filled in and hopefully verified with real case studies. At least the early levels the initiating, the opportunistic, and the managed. Um, whether it's habitual or leveraged, we will find some companies that will be that. And there will be seven or eight things here that I'm going to build on. So they're paying me to do that. Thank you very much. What is a digital business platform and why do I need one? I think each organization is going to have to build a platform, probably by best of breed today. Um, and it's going to have to help link an Industry 4.0 kind of model, which to me is the next generation uh, of linking machine to people, linking suppliers to providers. And this is the kind of complexity it's going to create. I know you, everybody likes running away from complexity. I know I do, but it's going to happen. And there are examples out there. I saw one in Seabed, um, and this was just a, a trial one, where they were taking images of people's um, mouths and jaws, and they were sending it to a place that outsourced um, the creation of brand new teeth for these people, whether it was complete or partial replacement. So. What we're going to see is the combining of subseconds to minutes. Here's an example of a digital crash. You can see um, smartphone um, detects a deceleration. Phone interrogates the passenger for vital signs. They have to be wearing a Fitbit or something. Um, or maybe it'll be built into people's clothes. I don't know. Phone sends medical information to the responders. 
phone interrogates the vehicle for damage because the vehicle's smart. Damage report is sent to the fire police and towing and insurance. Um, and the phone notifies the next of kin. That's all happening in sub-seconds. That's while it's still smoke, the radiator is still smoking. Um, but then also in the white collar side in some cases, it's repair estimates are sent to various providers from your phone. And, and you get responses back to your phone. Phone interrogates nearby video cameras so the lawyers can lick their lips, right? And the phone sends information to law firms for assessment. So you can get to pick your, your favorite ambulance chaser. So this is the kind of thing you're going to see. Now, I think you're going to have to have a number of different ingredients in your platform. This is my first cut at it. Aragon's going to pay me to make more, put more details in it. Um, guess what's at the top? Like I said, I'm a bigot for process, bigot for rules. It's going to have analytic and cognitive platforms, not just BI, cognitive. Integration and development. We've been talking a lot about development form, and we're going to have internet, internet of Thing platforms and application platforms, not applications that is wet cement, but applications that are built on BPM engines, smart process apps. I took a first cut at saying, who might be on these? Who has some strength here? And I just did my first cut um, so I could show Aragon it could be done. Are we going to find one vendor that satisfies all of those? Well, there's some that have some nice marks, right? They're, they're over, all over here, right? Now, on the Internet of Things, you got credit if you could aggregate the signals. But, you know, there are some firms on those bubbles that I'm missing. So my job is to interrogate. So hopefully I'll have a, an up-to-date list and some research um, that I'll produce via Aragon. See any of your vendors there? Uh, IBM's not here. Uh, TIPCO's in a lot of places. Software AG's in a lot of places. Google's in a couple of great spots. Microsoft's in a couple of great spots. Um, Pega's in a couple of great spots. So there's some, you know, I'm not going to make the mistake and create another intelligent BPMS magic quadrant. I mean, I've already been chided. <laughs> so you're going to have to put this together yourself. So you've got to decide whether to buy best of brand or best of breed. But my job is to prove this, this particular chart right or wrong and add new people. And hopefully I'll have time to do that now that somebody, I don't have to try to collect from late payments from people that hired me and have to go market myself. I've got a steady income now, so I can do that. I won't say which vendor owes me a lot of money right now, but they're in the room. <laughs> So the notion of learning the power of digital technologies, I think that's a challenge for all of us. It's a challenge for me. I showed you some stuff that's green. It's not ripe yet, right? Not all of everything I showed you was ripe. Not completely. Demonstrate some customer experience improvements and develop an incremental transformation plan. And to help you out, I wrote a new book. It's coming out in May on digital transformation. Basically, digital transformation, innovate or die. So I'm also a bigot for cognitive computing as well. And this is the book that I talked about agents, um, swarming agents, trying to bid to do work. So these, uh, the, the two on the right are already there. The one on the left should be there in May. Unfortunately, I have to tell you a sad story. My publisher and editor is an um, older gentleman, older than me, 
and you know I'm older than dirt. So um, this guy decides to do a favor for his neighbor, and he walks his neighbor's dog who's named Turbo. Now, was that a smart idea? Turbo, guess what happened? Turbo bolted. Turbo got the leash wrapped around this guy's legs. <whistles> Boom, broken hip. So that kind of delayed the book. Thank you, Turbo. So I'm only five minutes into your drinking time. And this is the five minutes that were given me. So I finished in, uh, well, actually 10 minutes over now that I think about it. But thank you for your patience.